welcome. We are here once again with one of our favorite artists that we have the pleasure of representing here at Tranquility Fine Arts. Welcome. This is Patty Duvall. I always question if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so feel free to correct me. Um, for some reason, my brain wants to go to, you know, something else when I, when I try to pronounce pretty much even simple names. Um, but we are here today to get to know her a little more, talk a little bit about her art and her process. So we'll start talking about your background, but first give us a little insight on how you uh, came to Georgia. Oh, well, um, my husband uh, got a new position with Coke. He works for Coke in New York transfer us here and he got it. So um, 19 years ago we left New York and came to Georgia. It's been a good 19 years. Well good. Good. And as much as I love New York, I definitely don't know. I like to visit. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I still have family there, but um, we have never regretted leaving. It's good to visit. Well for us, we don't know. But I was born and raised there all my life. So you are a wife, a mother, and an artist. And a grandmother. And a grandmother. Oh, that, that is very special. I get it. So tell us how your art career started. My art career started. My art career started when I, when I started taking it really seriously um, to develop my art and to market it probably about six or seven years ago. My youngest was getting ready to not meet mom so much anymore, and it's always been a passion of mine. But my family came first, and raising my kids came first. And so it kind of was something I, I got to here and there, or started and stopped. But um, about five or six years ago, I'd say I, I was able my own. So getting serious about it meant promote marketing, trying to branch out and network. Yes, and spending time in the studio every day creating. Mm -hmm. So it became what I did. Mm -hmm. In my job. Yeah. And that definitely pays off. My guess would be that you were sort of planting seeds even before that to lead up to that opportunity. Yeah, I know art can be a can be a therapeutic thing. Yes. It can help with the stressors of being a parent. Yes. I guess would be you did a lot of artsy things with your kids. I did. My kids are creative too, and I well, homeschooled them, so I had an opportunity to develop uh, an art curriculum and run our art program for the homeschool co-op in home too. So I was always doing something with it, just not focusing on a career for myself. So for a lot of years I spent um, teaching little ones from kindergarten up to high school, teaching them art, doing art shows for them, and helping them along. That was, that was a really good time. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's always a beautiful thing to think about. Part of our mission here, as you know, is to plant seeds and you know, art will speak to people. So our our focus is to speak hope and inspiration and, and uh, some of the good things in life. So what you're describing is planting seeds and doing a lot of good. And we may never know how those seeds grow, but some of those kids, some of those people, they probably carried that through and out. Yeah, a few of them went on to have their own creative careers or art careers themselves. So that's pretty mm -hmm. rewarding. Mm -hmm. that's what we got now. Absolutely. So most of your art is florals. And it, it, it's all florals. It is all florals. So why florals? Tell us a little bit about why that seems to just work for you. How did that come about? So it's always my hope that my art would convey a message of love, of hope, of joy, something that brought peace or a little, a little bit of rest if somebody just stopped to look at it. And 
I think I also care very much about people celebrating their individuality. And I don't think there's any other subject to me that shows beauty like flowers do and how flowers you can have a whole garden of roses and they're all roses and they're all red roses but each individual rose is unique in itself and different and so I want people I want people to recognize that about themselves too and have something beautiful to look at and there's also an element of spirituality for me in my work and I feel very strongly about my faith and very strongly that we reflect God in our conduct in what we do but nothing reflects him more than the things he created so I think I think florals just end up meeting all of those things and I don't when I create a painting I don't necessarily go in saying I'm going to make a floral every painting I start out with starts with just expressive mark making and and I don't have a plan but every painting ends up being a floral so it just it all fits mm -hmm. and that's definitely part of the process from an artistic standpoint if you go in with that blueprint most of the time it's not going to work out you know it's not architecture yeah um, so you have to kind of have an idea and let it take its own it's on story, it's on life, so to speak. Exactly. I think every painting has a story to tell. And, it, and I, I don't do it as well as I'd like to, but relax and let the painting tell its story. You know, I'll have an easier time creating, but, but it's, my, it's my heart to do that and let every painting tell its own story and reveal itself as, it, as, it, as the process of creating it happens. I think that definitely shows in your work. I can tell you that you have a lot of admirers. Um, you know, we recently did a featured artist event. We had a great turnout for that. As traffic comes in and out of the gallery, quite often people will comment on just the beauty. You know, when they when your work catches their eye. Um, so I think a lot of what you're trying to accomplish is actually there. If you could be a fly on the wall, you would see more of that. Um, so, you know, the old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And so you definitely have found your your talent and your niche. So what do you see going forward in terms of how you want to continue to grow and grow your, your legacy? I, I feel like I'm as much a work in progress as my work is. So I'd like to continue to, to expand my skills and my practice, taking a more expressive um, bent. So I, I'm really wanting to, to be more suggestive in it, still floral or floral-like, but, um, but more abstract, more, more expressive. What is it about the abstract that draws you? Abstract versus more of the realism. I I don't want to tell people what to see. I want them to I want them to interpret what they're seeing themselves. So I I might suggest by the colors that are used or some of the shapes, but I want people to to connect with it in their own way. Maybe it's not. The subject, maybe it's the colors, maybe it reminds them of something that, you know, that they have a fond memory of, or, or, or the colors or the shapes remind them of, of feeling good, or a time they felt peace, or, or it just brings them joy. So I personally feel like the less I deliberately get them to see, the more they can interpret for themselves what they need to see in it. 
And that makes total sense. Going back to florals being very different and unique. The same but different. So with a more expressive technique, you're actually accomplishing that. Yeah. And we know it's a floral, we know it's flowers. It's very unique and speaks its own story to you. Yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> and that's important. Yeah. Fun is definitely important. So what would you want the world to know? You know, one one of the things we we've, we've been just speaking in faith around here is 10 years from now, people will still be watching these videos and will still be intrigued with our artists. So what is it that you would want the world to know 10 years from now? It's about you, your work. If you could plant a seed of wisdom, anything at all. That they're seen, that they're known. Painting from the heart with that in mind, that will absolutely come out in your work. Going forward. So a fun question, is there anything on your bucket list? Anything at all that you'd like to do? Maybe you haven't. That we can help you just kind of have fun dreaming. Get to be, so to speak. Bucket list. It's a long list. <laughs> But um, I think a tropical island vacation is probably at the top. But that's kind of the season I'm in. It's, it's been a busy year. And so I'm looking for a little R&R. &R. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'd be the top of my bucket list. Tropical island. Yeah. It's very doable. It is doable. Hawaii, is it that far away? Just in Hawaii yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. A few yeah. months back. It is absolutely beautiful there. Lots of paint, lots to paint. It's very inspiring. Well, we definitely appreciate you. Definitely appreciate having you here, representing your art, talking to people about you, helping you grow. Um, it's an honor for the gallery to be able to do that. One of the things we are doing is to, to honor our artists is we're having an award ceremony where we're going to be honoring a few of our resident artists, but also some artists from out of state that maybe are not resident artists that are still accomplished and, and recognizable. Um, so we would love for you to be a part of that. That ceremony will be in September and I can send you more, more information, yes. um, but we would love for you to be one of our honored award winning artists and come and just be taken care of and be recognized and uh, doesn't have to be too long of a thank you speech but <laughs> okay. yeah. so I can send you more than that but we would absolutely absolutely enjoy that opportunity so thank you for being with us thank you for having me absolutely and we look forward to many more many more adventures we'll call it that